21st Precinct, Sergeant Lyons. What do you mean, Mercy? Lost? Well, how old is the little girl? Four and a half, huh? Who is she with, her mother? Yeah. Well, where is that? What's the address? What's that? Yeah? Well, what is that, sir? You are in the muster room at what? the 21st Precinct, the nerve center. The call is coming through. You will follow the action taken pursuant to that call from this minute until the final report is written in the 124 room at the 21st Precinct. All right, tell her I'm sending the officers right over. No, tell her not to go looking for her. To stay right there. The officers will be right there. Okay. 21st Precinct. It's just lines on a map of the city of New York. Most of the 173,000 people wedged into the nine-tenths of a square mile between Fifth Avenue and the East River wouldn't know if you asked them that they lived or worked in the 21st. Whether they know it or not, the security of their homes, their persons, and their property is the job of the men of the 21st Precinct. The 21st. 160 patrolmen, 11 sergeants, and four lieutenants, of whom I'm the boss. My name is Cronin, Vincent T. Cronin. I'm captain in command of the 21st Precinct. I was doing day duty, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. After I turned out the platoon and conferred with Lieutenant Gorman, the desk officer, about a patrol problem, I went into my office to read, digest, and sign nearly 100 reports and communications that had accumulated since I was last on the job 24 hours before. At 9.20, I was still at the paperwork. Uh, <clears throat> 21st Precinct, Captain Cronin. This is Sergeant Lyons on TS, Captain. We've got a four-and-a-half-year-old child reported missing. Now where? 11th, 32nd Avenue. Is that the residence? No, sir, it's the laundrette. The mother was in there with the family wash. The kid was with her. Just disappeared. Okay, I'll be right out. Yes, sir. Give me CB on here, Sergeant. The kid is with another captain and... Excuse me. Did I hand you in? 21st Precinct, Lieutenant Gorman, CB. Give me Detective Bureau, Borough Headquarters. Okay. 21st Precinct, Lieutenant Gorman. Uh, let me talk to the Borough Commander. Okay, I'll hold on. Is that a car in here for me, Sergeant? Okay, Skipper. 21st Precinct, Sergeant Lyon. At 681, call the 21st. Yeah. All right. 21st Precinct, Lieutenant Gorman, Chief. We've got a four-and-a-half-year-old girl missing, Chief. She's in the company of her mother in the laundrette at 1132nd Avenue. 1130. She disappeared. The name is Gloria Eulin. Y-U-L-I-N. The mother is Mrs. David Eulin. David. 278 East 60th. Yes, sir, that's right. East 60. We got it at 917. Uh, no, sir, not yet. I'm going to as soon as I get through with you, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, Chief. You notify the 21st Squad Commander, Red. I rang up there. Lieutenant King was on the phone. I told Kenny. And how'd we get it, Sergeant? The patrolman on post over there said the car. Owner of the London Red went out on the street and got him. He rang in with us. He looked all up and down the block every story. Can't find the kid. Why did you send over there? Check the cars two and three, Captain. What about a sergeant? Well, Sergeant Waters went sick, Captain. We just had a bad wreck on the East River Drive. Sergeant Collins is over there. Well, you better get a patrolman in here to relieve you on TS. We'll need a sergeant over there to take charge of the uniformed men. Yes, sir. Ring up Lieutenant King, will you? Yes, sir. Could be a rough one, Captain. Captain. Yeah. Captain Crowan wants to talk to you. Uh, Lieutenant King on the line, Captain. Okay. Hello, mate. Captain. I'll have five patrolmen and a sergeant over there, Matt. They're yours and any more you need. Well, thanks, Captain. I'm going myself right now. How about you? You want to ride? All right, I'll wait down here for you. 21st Precinct, Sergeant Lyons. Oh, Sergeant, if that's the car for me, I'm going to ride over Lieutenant King. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, never mind, 681. Resume patrol. Okay, Red. I'm going to roll. Yes, sir. Good luck. There are few occurrences handled with more urgency than the report of a missing child. On the basis of 100 years' experience at the police department, city of New York, it found that although nearly all missing children are eventually located and returned home safely, prompt and thorough police action might prevent an accident or crime involving the child. The action to be taken is described in great detail in the Manual of Procedure and Rule 316. With or without suspicion of a crime being involved, the desk officer is obliged to refer the report to the detective squad commander for immediate investigation. As required in no other type of case, the desk officer must, in addition, personally and forthwith, notify the commanding officer of Borough Headquarters Detective Division. All superior officers of the patrol force 
must cooperate with the detective commander and render any assistance requested. In company with Lieutenant King, I drove over to 1132nd Avenue, Jerry's Laundrette, from where the search would commence. Okay, Johnny. Captain. Smith, find a place to park, Johnny. We'll see you inside. Yes, sir. There's the car. The car? Yes, sir. Any sign of the car, Tom? No, sir. I've been rechecking in the stores all up the block. Nobody's seen her. Who's on the job again? Cochran and Giordano in sector car two, Lieutenant, and Iceman and Nelson in sector car three. Where are they? Well, Iceman and Nelson are cruising around to see if they can locate the girl on the street, and Cochran and Giordano are climbing stairs in the buildings up and down the block. Where's the mother of the car? Inside. She uh, brought in the family wash and just uh, was sitting and talking and reading a magazine after it was in the machine. That's the one. Uh, and she looked up, and uh, this kid was gone. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Where is she? In back, the proprietor has a little office in the back. Is that the proprietor? Yes, sir. Mr. Nesher, now just a second. 18, 41, 63, dollar 6, 43, 45, dollar 91. Excuse me, if I don't keep these figures going, they get way ahead of me now. Mr. Nesher, Captain Cronin, and Lieutenant King, Mr. Jerry Nesher. How do you do? Oh, Mr. Nesher. I am. Are you here when the child disappeared, Mr. Nesher? Oh, yeah, sure. I was right here. I'm telling you. Everything was peaceful, nothing but machines gone, and then all of a sudden she let out this scream, Mrs. Yolen. Uh-huh. I thought she uh, got a hand stuck in the machine or something. I ran up there, she's yelling something about uh, Gloria, my baby, I don't know. I thought the baby was in the machine. And then this other lady, a friend, she told me the lady's kid is gone. I said, calm down, how far could she go? So we looked around the store and front and back, nothing. We went out on the sidewalk, looked around, and still nothing. And I was getting worried, too. Uh, then this uh, here policeman came by, and I told him... That's all I know. She's in the bank? Yeah, in uh, my little office I got back there. Who's with her? I left a friend there with her. Oh, the friend had to go home, officer. She said she had some soup on the stove. She had to turn it off before it boiled away. She said she'd be back. You got her name, Patel? Uh, yes, uh, Mrs. Uh, Annabelle Nyota, 278-60. Yeah, that's right, Mrs. Nyota. The same building as her mother. Let's go talk to my man. Yes, sir. Uh, listen, uh, do you need me? It breaks my heart. I don't know. I got a couple kids myself here. Get to thinking what could happen. That's all right, Mr. Nesher. You stay here. They're right in back there on the left. Thank you very much. In here. Did you find her? Did I'm going? No, not yet. Oh, I just don't understand where she could have gone. I don't understand. Mrs. Yulin, this is Captain Cronin. Hello, Mrs. Yulin. Uh, Lieutenant King, Mrs. Yulin. I'm sorry to cause all this trouble. And I appreciate your help. I really appreciate it. How much the job, Mrs. Ewan? The Carol. Yes, sir. You better go out in the street and see what you can do. Yes, sir. Okay, Captain. Yeah, go ahead, the Carol. We'll find her, Mrs. Ewan. Oh, I hope so. I just hope so. Is it all right if I shut the door, Mrs. Ewan? Yes, you want. Be a little quieter. Now, you gave the officers a description of your little girl. You said she was four and a half. Yes, she's wearing blue jeans and she had a little white sweater and red shoes and white socks. Well, what's the color of her hair? Red hair, sort of. Kissing, I just call it. Where could she have gone? That's what I don't understand. Where? Well, we're going to try to find that out. Uh, Mrs. Julian, what time did you leave the house this morning? Well, it was about, uh, about 10 minutes to 9 o'clock. I took the walk and took Gloria and I came over here. Were you near the front door or toward the back? Toward the back. I like to get toward the back because there's less traffic in and out. I have a favorite machine, number 11. I was putting my first load in the machine. I told Gloria to be a good girl and try I got the wash in, and she was playing, and I started talking to Mrs. Nyota. She was walking right next to me. So I was talking and looking at the pictures in the magazine. Then I looked up to see where Gloria was. She was gone. I guess I let out a big scream. That's what Jerry said I did anyway. Then you started to look for her? Yes, we looked all over the store. In front and in back and under the counter, even in here. There was a lady up in front washing one of the first machines, and he asked her if she saw Gloria go out. Well, she didn't think so. She didn't remember. She was busy with her walk. So we went out on the street, and we looked around. We couldn't find her. We looked in stores. And then Jerry said, finally, we better tell the cop on the beach. So we saw him on the corner, and we told him. Were there any other children in here at the time, Mrs. Young? Well, usually there are. Let's see. No, 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 not this morning when I came. But that didn't make any difference. Gloria plays nice by herself, and Jerry has some blocks, and... Toys over in the corner for when mothers bring their children. Did you see anyone come or go? What do you mean? 
Did anyone come into the store? You noticed particularly. Well, no, I was talking to Mrs. Mayota and reading nobody I know. Oh, just the laundry man, I think. What laundry man? Oh, from the wholesale laundry, you know. Some customers like to get things like sheets and shirts finished. Jerry has his service. You can get sheets and shirts and things like that all done for you. He's the only one you notice, the man from the wholesale laundry. Yes, that's right. You know, I was worried before, but now I'm, I'm getting scared. I'm, I'm really getting scared. Do you think it would do any good if I went out again and looked too? No, no, the officers have a good description, Miss Yule, and they'll, they'll know her if they see it. Come in. Come in, Sergeant. I got someone to fill in on P.S., Captain. Good. Now, what do you want Sergeant Lyons to do, Matt? Mm, you know what I think would be the best thing, yes, sir? You supervise the members of the patrol force who are making the search. Yes, sir. You'll find for Carol Cochran, Giordano, and Eisman on the job, and there'll be more to come. Yes, sir. I'll get right on Oh, excuse me, Johnny. That's all right, Sergeant. Come in, Johnny. Yes, sir. Mr. Eulen, this is Detective Bender. How do you do? I went over to your house, Mrs. Eulen. I thought maybe somebody might have found the child, brought her home. But they didn't. No. Nope. What's your husband's first name, Mrs. Eulen? Uh, David. What's his occupation? He's a butcher. He works in Washington Market. Have you notified him the child is missing? No. Why not? Well, uh, you see, we're separated. For how long? Since the middle of December. Where's he been living? In the first room in the village someplace. I don't know. Have you seen him recently, Mrs. Young? Oh, yes, yes. He comes to get Gloria on Sundays and bring her home. Is that the arrangement? Yes, every Sunday. And if he wants her more, all right, too. Is he contributing to your support? Oh, yes. Every week, like a clock. Is he satisfied with the arrangement? I never said anything. He wasn't. He's the one that wanted to break up, not me. I was satisfied. Listen, you don't think that he... Oh, no, not, not that he wouldn't. We'll find out whether he would or not. Bender. Yes, sir. Check him out. Yes, sir, right away. Call me one way or the other. Yes, sir. I, I don't think so. I really don't think so. I, I wouldn't believe Dave could do a thing like that. I couldn't believe it. Well, this job, Mrs. Gillen, we believe what we believe to be the case doesn't matter. It's what we find out that counts. Within the next half hour, 13 men from various commands joined the hunt. And the 17th patrolman, under the immediate supervision of Sergeant Lyons, began a search of every building, from basement to roof, in a six-block area. They looked in courtyards and alleyways. They talked to storekeepers and pedestrians. Meanwhile, detectives from the 21st Squad were assigned by Lieutenant King to seek out all acquaintances of the mother in the neighborhood, the parents of all the girls' playmates, all the customers known to have been in the laundrette at the time of the disappearance, and to make personal inquiry concerning the child. An alarm describing the girl was teletyped to every precinct in the city, and a radio message concerning her was broadcast to all motor patrol cars in the borough of Manhattan. Despite all this effort, at 10.38 a.m., there was still no sign of the child. As I stood by, Lieutenant King telephoned to Deputy Chief Inspector Fleischer at Detective Bureau Borough Headquarters from the counter in the laundrette. Well, no, sir, not a thing. Yes, sir. We could use them if you would, Chief. All right. As soon as possible, huh? I might. Hold on a second, Chief. Yeah, Captain. Yeah, if we're going to expand the search, maybe you should send for the emergency truck. That's a good idea. Chief, Captain Cronin suggests instead of draining men from the precinct, you might want to put in a request for an emergency truck. They could be a big help in searching all the buildings around here. Yes. All right, yes, sir. I'll keep in touch with you. Mm -hmm. He's sending up two detectives each in the 19th and 23rd squads, and he's asking the division inspector for four plain clothesmen. They all ought to be here within 15 or 20 minutes. Well, this neighborhood is really jumping. We'll be jumping a lot more, Mr. Nash. I've got to give you credit. When you do something, you do it. You don't kid around. A oh, child that age pretty helpless. Even if she's all right, she's probably too scared to tell anybody who she is and where she lives. Yeah. How's the mother doing? How do you think? Yeah. Uh, could you excuse me a minute? Uh, I'd like to get there. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, sure. And this is the headache end of the business, the finished work. A lot of bookkeeping, a lot of complaints, and not much profit. Yeah. But it's a service you got to have. You know, Mama can come in here and work the machines all she wants, but Papa wants his job done professional, so I'm stuck with it. Well, another load for them to knock the buttons off. Uh, Mr. Nash, if we're getting in your way around here, I'm sorry. Well, who said you're getting in my way? Well, you see, we're required to conduct a search from the point where the child was last seen. Listen, everybody's doing their part. I'll do mine. We're just about finishing up in the next block, Lieutenant. Every building, Sergeant? Every building, top to bottom, basements, roofs, halls. We're knocking on every door. Nothing. Well, we'll just have to keep at it. Well, which way do you want us to go next? The next block east? You want us to go uptown another block? What do you think, Captain? 
Nice to talk to him, Matt. Yeah, thanks. Tell you what might help. Start your men on the next block east. We're getting nine more patrolmen in here any minute. Oh, good. You start your men east. When they get here, we'll start them on the next block uptown from where you left off. Yes, sir. I'll get them going. I better check the desk off again. That's a good idea, Matt. Well, maybe I ought to see how the mother's doing, hmm? Yeah, what you would. Hello, this is Lieutenant King. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Major. Now, help yourself. Lieutenant Gorman, please. Did you find it? Uh, no, not yet, Miss Gillen. Oh, I'm sitting here thinking what could have happened to her. Where could she go? Maybe one of those maniacs was the only thing I can think of. Ah, no, Mr. Gillen. What else? Kidnappers? Well, we kidnappers want. I haven't got anything. Dave hasn't got anything. No, I, I don't think you ought to jump to conclusions like that. Two well, hours almost. A little girl. girl. Four and a half. She couldn't just disappear. To where? She wasn't out of my sight two minutes. Not two minutes. Uh, well, we'll find him. Yeah, sure. But how? When? Why? Just two minutes. Come in. Captain Lieutenant King, I'd like to see you. Any news? Did you see her? No, Mrs. Jones. Well, would you excuse me, Mrs. Jones? Yes, sir. I uh, brought the husband up, Captain. Yeah. Lieutenant King's talking to him. Lady, if you want to bring your own soap powder, how can I stay in business? Captain Cronin, David Eulen. Mr. Eulen? It's something more than she's just lost, isn't it? You know as much as we do, Mr. Eulen. You were at work when this detective came down to the market? Yeah, I was at work in the stall. I was cutting a side of beef. Isn't that right? Yeah, he was at work, all right. How long have you and your wife been separated, Mr. Eulen? Oh, two or three months, something like that. What was the reason for the separation? Well, is it necessary to go into that? I think it is. Well, seven years we're married. Since the month after I got out of the army. Seven years, nag, 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 be a big shot, talk better, dress nicer, move to Long Island. Seven years, nag, nag. If it wasn't for Gloria, it happened a long time ago, believe me. But even with Gloria, enough is enough. Mr. Eulen, we know you love your daughter. And we know you were at work when this thing happened. But if you have anything to do with it... Me? Yeah, you sent a friend or a relative... Anybody else up here to take that child, we'll find out about it. Listen, you're barking up the wrong tree. I'm assuming that I am, but just in case I'm not, I want to tell you. We've got 30 men on the job right now, and there are more coming. Your wife is in there, worried to death. I'm worried to death, too. You're behind this in any way, Mr. Yulin. You're going through a lot of trouble. I'm not behind it. Now's the time to get it straightened I'm out. I'm telling you the truth. All right. Just wanted you to understand. I understand. And, uh, yes, sir. Right. Whitey Howard is rechecking the stores on this block. Find him and give him a hand. Oh, okay, Lieutenant, right away. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, Lieutenant King, telephone. Thanks. Are you the father? Lieutenant yeah. King. Well, you got my deepest. No word yet, Chief. All right. Yes. I'll watch out for him. Yes, sir. Chief Fleischer. Yes, sir. Emergency truck is on the way. Good. You're getting some credit to find your daughter, Mr. Ewan. These guys have been breaking their necks. Tough cop. Ugh. A bunch of softies. Have I ever seen any? I, I know how much you're doing. I appreciate it. Don't you think you'd better talk to your wife? Yeah. I, I guess I ought to. Oh, this way, Mr. Young. Listen, uh, officers, you know, while you're all here, somebody might bring Gloria home to the flat. We've got a man posted over there. Oh. Hello, Evelyn. David. Uh, they'll, they'll, they'll find her, Evelyn. Don't find it. Don't worry. Two hours. For two hours. Where could she be? I don't. They'll find her. Won't, won't you? No, we're certainly trying. Evelyn, you, you know how many policemen they got looking? Thirty. Isn't that right? Thirty. That's right. Thirty policemen. They got them more coming. Fifty policemen. How could fifty policemen not find her? I'm glad you came, David. It's times like this. Yeah, I know. Is it cold, Doc? On Sunday, you look bad. Terrible. I want to ring in, Captain. I'll go with you, Matt. They'll find her. Don't, don't worry about it. It's going to be a long time, Matt. I don't know. Somebody came in and took that girl out of here right from under her mother's nose. He had a lot of nerve. We haven't had a squeal like that in the precinct in a long time, have we? I don't remember any for a year or two. How about in the general area? Not that I can recall. The last one I heard about was up in the Bronx, and I got the guy. Yeah. Uh, excuse me. I'm coming through. I, I got to push this in the back. All right, come ahead. I got enough room there. Uh, Mr. Nesher. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What's in there? Oh, that's the bane of my existence. That's a load of finish work to go out in the morning. I'll have another basket full by then. Excuse me. Uh, just a second. Miss Yellen. Yes? Any news? 
No, uh, no, not yet. Would you, would you come out here a minute, Mr. Sherman? Oh, what's the matter? You said before you'd remember the man from the, uh, you remember the man from the wholesale laundry coming in while you were doing the wash before you noticed Glory was gone? Yes, I did. Mr. Mesher, does he take this big canvas basket out with him? I do, every day. Loaded with dirty wash, and he brings in two with clean. Well, was there one basket in the front of the store waiting for him? I didn't see it. I keep them in back. Could Gloria have wandered in the back? Oh, yeah, the whole place is open. I let the kids go all over. There's nothing could hurt them around here. A million kids come in. I let them wander all over. You've got an idea, Captain. What? I don't get it. Yeah, look, folks, uh, you two wait in the office, will you, please? Well, if you think something, we've got a right to know. It's our baby. Evelyn, Evelyn please. If they can find her, they will. Go ahead, Mr. Young. All right. But you let us know. As soon as we find out something. Hey, what's the story? I don't get it. Well, there's a chance the girl might have climbed into one of the laundry baskets this morning. The driver was in here then. The mother remembered that much. Well, that's ridiculous. Maybe. Oh, and then again, maybe it isn't so ridiculous. What's the name of the laundry you take from? Uh, the Yorkland. Where are they located? On the west side, Amsterdam Avenue, 6869 Street. In there someplace. The same, have the same driver here every day? Yeah, this is on his route. Well, what's his name? Murray. What's his first name? Oh, gee, I don't know whether Murray is his first name or last name. Just Murray. What's the phone number over there? At the laundry? Yeah. Uh, Academy 2 4599. All right, let's get him on the phone. Yeah, sure. I'll oblige with anything. Lieutenant King telephoned the Yorkland Laundry and spoke to the delivery manager. He explained quickly what he was after and secured the telephone numbers of stops along the route of the truck that had made a delivery and pickup at Jerry's Laundrette shortly after 9 o'clock. After three telephone calls, he learned that the truck had just left after making a stop on 1st Avenue near 36th Street. He called the next place the truck was due to stop, a laundry on 38th Street near Lexington Avenue. The truck was expected, but had not yet arrived. With Detective John Bender, Lieutenant King hurried to his car and drove downtown to intercept the truck. In the meantime, the search of the neighborhood continued. I phoned CB to dispatch a motor patrol car from the 15th Precinct to the 38th Street address in case the truck arrived before Lieutenant King. We waited in Jerry's laundrette for work. I don't know about you, Captain, but the suspense is killing me. It's only a hunch. Well, you want to sell yourself. How do you ever expect to be an inspector? Mm. Well, what about the Mr. and Mrs.? Don't you think you ought to let them in on it? No. No, they might get too hopeful. If it doesn't work, then uh, worse off than they were before. Hey, that could be it. Take it. Yeah. Jerry's laundrette. Who? Oh. No, no, he hasn't worked here in six months. No, I don't know. I haven't any idea. I... Look, I can't talk now. I'm expecting an emergency call. Yeah? You too. You tell them the truth. They don't believe you. Four men from the 15th job here, Captain. Oh, yes, Sergeant. Shall I start them over there going uptown? Well, I tell you, I think you better... Get it, Mr. Nash. Yeah. Jerry's laundrette. Yeah. Who's this? Oh, did you find a kid? What? Yeah, all right. Captain. Thanks. Captain Cronin. Matt King, Captain. Yes, Matt. The girl was on the truck. Oh, good. They found her. She was laying in the basket and decided to hide under the laundry. She thought it was fun being rolled outside. When she got in the truck, she got scared. Every time the driver opened up the back, she kept quiet from fright. Is she all right, Matt? That's fine. They got her a great big ice cream cone. She went to talk to her mother. All right, Matt. Hold the phone up. Put her on. Sergeant, sir, call off the church. Yes, sir. Uh, Captain? Yes. I think you can use the extension in the office. It's a little more private. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Yes. Mrs. Yulon. Yes? Any news, Captain? Uh, pick up the phone, ma'am, if you. This one? Yeah, that one. It's your little girl. We found her. Oh. Baby! Thanks, Captain. Hello, my baby. <laughs> Darling, give Mommy a kiss. That's good. Yes, I'll see you very soon. Listen, would you like to talk to Daddy? Yes, he's here. Yes, we're here together. And we're going to come and get you together. Yeah. Hello, Gloria? Yes, baby, I know. Well, you tell me all about it. You know something, Captain? You got a great job. Sure, we're together. Mommy and I are together. Great. I should have been a cop. Yes, baby? Yeah. Seems great now, but the way I thought it was going to turn out, you could have had the job for two cents. Twenty first precinct, Sergeant Lyons. Where? Well, how do you know he was killed? Now, where is that? Between 3rd and Lexington? Oh, between 2nd and 3rd. Well, who found him? It looks like he what? How this happened? And so it goes. 
Around the clock through the week, every day, every year. A police precinct in the city of New York is a flesh and blood merry-go-round. Anyone can catch the brass ring. Or the brass ring can catch anyone. 21st Precinct, a factual account of the way police work in the world's greatest city, is presented with the official cooperation of the Patrolman's Benevolent Association, an organization of more than 20,000 members of the police department, City of New York. James Gregory in the role of Captain Cronin and Ken Lynch as Lieutenant King. Featured in tonight's cast were Mandel Kramer, Santos Ortega, Elspeth Eric, Wendell Holmes, John Sylvester, and Eric Dressler. 21st Precinct is written, produced, and directed by Stanley Niff. Art Hannah speaking. <laughs>